So Eamon, we've just come out from the Synod Hall. How are you feeling? Great. It's really good, relieved that we're this far, but also there's a real sense of, of the spirit at work in this process and uh, great to be able to play a part in it. And I just got an opportunity and it's a privilege to be inside to hear the Holy Father say he won't be issuing an exhortation that he's accepted the document as it is. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it's the first time since these synods were set up after Vatican II that this has ever happened. A new provision that Pope Francis put into a document called Communio Episcopalis, whereby he can recognise this de facto as part of the teaching of the Church. So the document, we, we went in there this afternoon with the, uh, you know, the results, if you like, of three years of journeying together. And Pope Francis, who of course was intimately involved in that process, has now declared this document. It's a bit like in the Council of Jerusalem, it has pleased the Holy Spirit and has pleased us. And we have the blessing, if you like, of Pope Francis for the concrete implementations that are in the document. And I suppose that's really, we walked in there today, still in the consultation, decision-making, exploring stage of this process. We walked out as missionary disciples to go and implement what is now on paper and agreed among us. I love that you tied it to the Council of Jerusalem because just that sense that it is a grassroots document that Paul and Barnabas came back telling stories and these have been the experiences and stories from the church all around the world that's led to now. Yeah, and that's been part of the whole enrichment, of course, of this is that there have been the voices of so many people in diverse contexts and recognising also that how we go from here now will be different in different cultural contexts. So what is needed, for example, in Ireland, of course, you know, at a time of the church feels very much, I suppose, besieged and, and the energy levels in many places can be low, is precisely the work of formation. If I were to say one thing that we really need to work on and get our act together on in the Irish church context is formation. Pool our resources, bring together the various bodies that have resources to put at the disposal of forming people as missionary disciples. I love hearing you say that as well, because in terms of the Irish synodal pathway, just do you see something in the document now that gives us pathways, if you like, for how we proceed for our own path? Well, I know that many dioceses, including my own of Chum, of course, uh, and through your own support, have been working very hard on establishing pastoral counts, parish pastoral councils, indeed diocesan pastoral councils. It's now quite clear the document actually says that we insist that they be made mandatory. So, you know, there's no hiding place on that issue and that they should become the places where the, the people of God can, can express and bring to bear on the life of their pastoral communities. Actually, the changes and, and, and renewal that is needed at grassroots level, always, of course, uh, you know, led by the, the, the priests and those who, who minister in those parishes, but very much recognizing they have a right to be heard. Mm -hmm.